Um, so if um, if there's a student there who feels like they've done that and they've crafted an article or maybe an, uh, another uh, psychotherapist who, who's written something or a researcher, um, what would the process look like then if they submit to the churn or how, how would that work? Well, it's it's slightly long winded. It, I mean, the, the first the, the first health warning is that this thing takes several, several months and indeed some journals take several years when you first submit to finally getting in print. Um, we try and and move it along fairly quickly, uh, but it just it just depends. So the first stage is you submit, and then as the editor, I decide. Okay, does this look like it? It it could work for publication. At that point, I might say no, and I might have a dialogue with the, with the author. But mostly, I would say yes, and I would get, or um, uh, we'd get th maybe two, three, four reviewers, peer reviewers, who review the, um, the article and offer supportive comments. Um, then, I collate all of those comments and I highlight the key things that the author needs to do. And then that goes back to the author. The author then has to look at the comments and decide whether or not they want to take them on board or how to handle the feedback or what to change in their paper. And they then send me an, a, a revised um, article an edited article, but also let me know what you've changed and why. So looking at the reviewers' comments and 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 addressing them. And then at that point I might say, well yeah, you you've really addressed the comments. You've you've done enough. We now just need to work on it together and we'll we'll push this through. Or I might have to send it out for review again. And I send it back to the reviewers to say, okay, have, have, have they done what you were asking? Is this enough? Um, any case, at some point, it'll be enough and, and we're more or less there. At that point, the hard work starts in that there's several stages of editing. So first of all, the author and I will work on the paper together. I'll put my bits in and suggest, you know, sometimes putting things in the house style or the referencing isn't correct or um, making some suggestions for clarity. Um, and like, for example, my my pet hate is an acronyms. I'm, I'm not very good at all these initials, so I prefer, prefer authors just to spell things out. Um, and keeping it simple. So from then on, uh, the author then submits a final copy. And when that's accepted, it goes for uh, to be made into the proof. So it's formatted according to the journal style. And then that comes back and the author then has to edit and double check and check that everything is correct. And then at some point down the line, it's ready to go to be uploaded. Um, now, we only have one volume a year. We, we do have the option to have more than that. But for the moment, it's only one, one volume a year. And I tend to have two periods, the spring and the autumn, when I put the bits together. So um, if, say, somebody submitted something in January, it's possible we could get the article ready for the spring um, upload so it but you know i'm warning you it it does take three four five six or more months um but as you say it can it can take a long time but just from my own experience i feel like this journal is, is quicker than some others as you say can take years from submission to before you even get an answer back whether they're interested or not so um you know i i think that, 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 that a lot of people put in a lot of hard work to make yeah. that happen and i think yeah. it's as quick as it, it possibly can be i think <laughs> And I think we need to talk a bit about the peer reviewers here. I mean, they're ordinary practitioners and they've got busy lives as well. And, and one of the things about getting peer review comments, it can be painful. I mean, it's hard, you know, if, if your work is being critiqued. We ask our reviewers to try and be positive and supportive and constructive and encouraging. But 
critical comments were made as well. And I think I think it's really important as an author to try not to be too wounded in your ego and just know that when you address feedback, your article is improved. So, um, you know, it's all for a good cause. And um, I, I actually really enjoy now, after like 30 years of this, <laughs> I enjoy getting reviewer feedback because it's like, oh, I never, never thought about it that way. Thank you. You know, that will help me make it better. Well, you can tell me how to get there, Linda, because I'm still a bit, <laughs> still a bit sensitive when <laughs> the feedback comes back. But I, but I actually agree with that point that, yeah. It's, a, it's an actual wonderful opportunity that yeah. someone's spending some time to give yeah. you, you know, suggestions around ways yeah. that you could improve yeah. your writing. And I think ultimately that means your article is going to be better, even if the stuff that you disagree with that you don't take on board yeah. for the article, right. even right. going through that thoughtful process of, well, why am I saying no to that? Yeah. Why do I think that will make yeah. it better? I think helps you make makes yeah. you a better writer. Yeah, it's important to recognize you don't have to say do what the reviewers are saying. I mean, if sometimes it's it's a bit uh, disturbing, really. Sometimes the reviewers say completely opposite things. Do this, no, do this, and then you're thinking, oh, what do I do? Well, in that case, you talk to the editor. I mean, this applies to this journal as well as every other journal. You know, talk to an editor saying, well, I'm being given mixed messages here. Um, this is what my take is. What do you think? And usually the editor will go along with the author. You just need to be able to justify your position. Fantastic. 